let's start with the shanti mantra om bhadram karne vishnu yama devaha bhadram pashe makshadhirya jatraha stirai rangaihi sushtu vagum sastanu bihi vyashema devahi tam yadayuho swastina indro vritta shravaha swasti na pusha vishva vedaha swasti na stakshora rishtane mihi swasti no brihaspatir dadato om shanti 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 hi We are studying the Mandukya Upanishad and we have finished the first chapter called Agama Prakaranam. All of us know the definition of Atma from Tattva Bodha, which is beyond the five koshas beyond the three bodies and beyond the three states of experiences the body is an upadhi a medium of transaction the mind is a medium of transaction the world is what we experience through the body and mind but beyond all what we experience the truth of this universe is the experiencer consciousness this experiencer consciousness is not visible to us it is the knowledge principle jnanam satyam jnanam anantam of taittiriya upanishad it is knowledge that is the truth all of us seek something from the world when we seek something from the world for happiness it is called as bahir drishti in sanskrit our sense organs are turned outside in the world we seek sense objects we seek relationships we seek many things in the outer world all that is to make me happy what the vedas tell us is you will fail miserably if you are having this drishti there is another drishti which veda is bringing about which is called as antar drishti so i try to train my mind and the sense organs to look not outside but we draw the vision from the out external world turn the mind inward this is what the vedas teach us when we do this antar drishti we ask ourselves a question who am i what am i and then the seeking starts when the seeking starts there are three methods which shankaracharya has prescribed to find an answer to this question who am i he says you can look at the five koshas 
which was expanded in the Taittiriya Upanishad. You can take another path of looking at the three bodies, the gross body, subtle body, and the causal body, which is explained in the Mandokya Upanishad, and also the third path, which is the three states of consciousness, waking, dream, and sleep. Many Upanishads follow these methods, which are called as Prakriya. They are all used, they are the means used to arrive at the final truth. Not only the truth about myself, but when I discover the truth about myself, the Upanishads teach us that is the truth of the universe. Tattvamasi in Chandogya Upanishad. So this internal search through the three bodies and the three states of consciousness is the subject matter of Mandukya Upanishad. There are 12 mantras, six mantras are devoted, seven mantras are devoted to the, to the theoretical side to explain to us how to look at the three states from verse one to seven, and then from eight to 12, it teaches us a upasana, a meditation technique to understand the same which has been taught from verse one to seven, how do I realize it in myself? How do I arrive at the ultimate truth, which is called as Turiyam? In this Mandukya Upanishad, it is called as Turiyam. In Taitri Upanishad, it is called as Satchit Ananda. Chandogya Upanishad, it is called as Bhuma Vidya. In the seventh chapter, in the sixth chapter, it is called as Sat Vidya. So these are all different names, but ultimately they are talking about one reality, which is the substratum from which the entire universe rises, exists, and resolves. All the schools of philosophy, they agree on one common platform. That common platform is, they all agree that there is a superimposition, there is an error in the vision of a jiva. When you study the Brahma Sutras, when you study the advanced texts, they all, uh, and even in this uh, Mandukya, in the last fourth chapter, there will be some dialogues of other philosophers. All the philosophers, they agree that there is an Adhyasa, Adhyasa means superimposition of the five koshas, the three states, the three bodies on the Turiyam, the Atma. These are the fundamentals of Vedanta. When you understand the fundamentals, you will be able to understand the Upanishads clearly. When you understand the Upanishad clearly, you can apply it and see whether it is the truth. Unless you yourself see it as the truth, that teaching is not complete. Upanishads wants us to discover our nature. And this adhyasa or a reflection, which is the three states in the mirror of the consciousness is what is revealed in Mandokya Upanishad. So the screen, we all know the TV screen, in that the movies happen. The TV screen is compared to a screen of consciousness. 
which is the ultimate truth. That screen can exist independently without the three bodies and the three states. It is an independently existing spiritual entity. It is the substratum from which the world arises, in which the world is existing and in which the world resolves. If you understand Turiyam correctly, you will experience that the whole universe is rising in you, the whole universe exists in you, and the whole universe resolves in you. If you can claim that this is what is the truth, that is called as moksha. That is called as ultimate freedom. We all have freedom, no doubt about it, but the freedom is our nature is not understood by us. We think by collecting money and keeping in the bank balance, we'll have some freedom. It is true, no doubt about it. It will give us some happiness. The goal of human life is, according to the other philosophers, Dukkha Nivarti. Sankhya, Yoga, Nyaya, Vaiseshika, all of them, the, the definition of freedom or moksha is Dukkha Nivrti. Dukkha Nivrti means freedom from sorrow, elimination of sorrow in life. That is our goal. Advaitam adds one more point. It accepts Dukkha Nivrti is the goal of human life and that is why we all study the Upanishads. I want some freedom. I want to know that I am not limited to this body. That is what I have to learn from these Upanishads. I'm not limited by my mind, but today without this knowledge of Turiyam, without the knowledge of Atma, I feel very limited. That feeling of limitation must go when I study the Upanishads. And if you follow the methodology of the Upanishads correctly, you will enjoy this freedom. So Advaita Vedanta adds Sukha, sukha Prapti. That means you not only get rid of sorrow, but you claim that Happiness is your nature. I say I am happiness, bliss by nature, but I may be having an experience of Dukkham in my transactions. That is what the Manduka Upanishad is trying to teach us. Experiences are fleeting. They are time bound. But my nature is not in time, it is timeless. I need to have viveka, discrimination, discernment of the three avasthas, the three waking, dream and sleep. These are the three states of consciousness in which we find ourselves. They are given to me. I don't work towards sleep or waking or dream. It is a part and parcel of this universe. I am in the universe. I experience these three states. What the Upanishad is trying to teach me is how do I come out of these three states and realize the truth of the whole universe? And that is explained in the seventh mantra of the Mandukya Upanishad. Na anta praknyam, na bahish praknyam. That verse is a central verse of this entire Upanishad. After telling us 
that the waking dream and sleep are the states in which there is a medium called as the body and mind. The Upanishad declares the truth or the substratum, which is called as consciousness awareness principle. And then it gives certain features. It says this consciousness is prapancho upashamam, shantam, shivam, advaitam. So in the first chapter, we see that the three states are also compared to the Om. And how do we use this word Om to arrive at the Thuriyam state? From verse 8 to 12, the Upanishad gives us a methodology of equating the waking state to the letter R of Om, the dream state to the letter O, the sleep state to the letter Ma. Very, very ingenious method. And then after you have chanted Om, what remains is a silence. That silence the Upanishad has equated to the Amatra. Amatra means the Bindu on the letter Om. This silence reveals our real nature. So by, chant, by, by doing a meditation, chanting Om, remaining silent, Chanting Om, remaining silent, chanting Om, remaining silent. You do this meditation for 10 minutes a day and you will realize the essence of the Thuriyam you will be able to realize. This is how the Mandukya Upanishad is structured. 12 verses, beautiful structuring and a, a, a fantastic method among all the Upanishads, many, many seekers have found the real truth revealed to themselves through these 12 mantras. Agama means Veda. So the first chapter is called Agama Prakaranam. The first chapter called as Agama. The second chapter is called Vaitatya Prakarnam. The third chapter is called as Advaita Prakarnam. And the fourth chapter is called as Alata Shanti Prakarnam. So in the second, so the first chapter, there are 12 mantras and then there are, there is a commentary on these 12 mantras. Then in the second chapter, that is what we are, we have started last week. We take one word, prapancho upashamam, which describes Thuriyam, which describes the ultimate truth, which describes the Atma. And the whole chapter two is, is devoted to discuss one word of the seventh mantra. Prapancho Upashamam. In the third chapter, Advaita Prakarnam, one word of the seventh mantra, Advaitam, is discussed. And in the last chapter, the fourth chapter, Alata Shanti Prakarnam, an example is taken of, a, of an Agarbhati, an incense stick to show how our mind is like an incense stick continuously it is fleeting in nature at the same time it gives an appearance that there is a something 
existing. And in this last chapter, Gaudapadacharya, the uh, author of the commentary on the 12, on the 12 mantras, he takes and refutes all other philosophers who say that the whole world is nothing else but Dvaitam. I am, Dvaitam means I am the Jiva, the soul. There is a Paramatma, there is a Lord, which is something other than me. I and the Lord, they are Dvaitam. I can never be the Paramatma, Paramatma can never be me. That is what is called as Dvaita philosophy. I am always a Dasa. I worship the Ishvara. In Advaitam, the same Lord which the Dvaitins call, who exists outside the body, what Advaitin says, you can realize that God in your own body mind complex. And when you realize that Atma, that Atma is the same as the Lord. Therefore, there are not two Atmas, there is only one Atma, Nirguna Atma, which is called as Turiyam, which is non-dual in nature. And that is what is proved by Gaudapadacharya, the great grand guru of Shankaracharya. Shankaracharya's guru, his guru's guru, that is what is Gaudapadacharya. This is a very, very profound Upanishad. At the beginning of this uh, Upanishad, the chanting which was done is done by Swami Paramatmananda. And those of you who are interested can listen to the chant and by heart the mantras. And now we go straight to what we left, where we left last week. Vaitatya Prakaranam. Vaitatya, Vaitatyam means falsehood. What this chapter is trying to tell us is that the entire world we experience is unreal. Unreal means it is asatyam. The word unreal is also used by another name, mithya or anrutam, mrisham. All this means the same thing. A little bit uh, diversion here. When we say mithya, you must be clear what you mean by mithya. For those who are new to this Upanishad and generally to Vedanta, There is something we call it as existence and there is something we call it as non-existence. These are things, there are two words, existence and non-existence. I'm, uh, I'm telling you from the Vedantic point of view, how do we understand existence? How do we understand mithya and how do you understand non-existence? According to Vedanta, existence means something which real, which is really existing in the past, in the present, and in the future. Continuously existing, which is called as the truth, satyam. So what is there in the world which we can call it as satyam? Can we call the body a satyam? No. Can we call the mind a satyam? No. Because it perishes. Body perishes. The mind fluctuates. Can we call the world a satyam? No. The trees, they, they perish. Another tree comes back. So 
so the, we can't say that the, the the stars perish millions of stars are perishing daily we can't call the world which we see outside as satya what upanishad says is there is only one satyam which is called as the ultimate truth and it is always existing and that is called as existence consciousness bliss satchit ananda or in this chapter it is called as turiya this turiyam is the observing principle the chaitanyam awareness principle it never changes right from birth till today my awareness has not changed not only yours not only mine the whole awareness principle in this universe has not changed it is an changeless principle it exists forever everything else will change the world in the waking is different than the world in dream the waking world is not seen not experienced in the dream world the dream world is not experienced in the waking world and both these worlds dream and waking are not experienced in the deep sleep so the world is relative when i say world we have to put our body and mind also in the world because we are not apart from the world this body very much belongs to the universe our mind belongs to this universe which we call it as jagat so the world is changing the consciousness awareness is not changing that consciousness is satyam the world we call it as mithya mithya means it is an appearance it is having novelty it is having utility but ultimately it is not the truth that is what is called as an appearance it is mithya this word mithya is very important because this is the word which we are trying to attack in the second chapter and we must remember what is satyam what is mithya this is not clear you can ask me at the end of the in uh, at the end of the class i will explain to you again and what is non existence non existence means it never exists it can never be experienced therefore that is not the truth never experienced by anybody till now we can't call it existence because there is no observer who has seen it so only if there is somebody in the whole universe who has experienced it we call it as appearance flowers in the sky nobody has experienced you can imagine but that is not truth it is non existence rabbit's horn these are all the uh, vedic examples veda themselves give us these examples a son of a barren woman never experienced because she cannot produce a child so these are all non existence so non existence never exists existence always exists in between there is a category which advaitin has invented the other schools of thought do not accept this category this is where shankaracharya's brilliance comes in his commentaries and this category is what is the foundation of the entire advaita philosophy we say adhyasa we say superimposition we say there is an error of vision because of this fundamental point that the world is an appearance and i am the satya the seer of the world the consciousness principle is the satyam 
Satyam can exist independently as we all ex experience it in our sleep state. I am Satyam in the sleep state. I exist without the body, mind and the world. But in what form? In the Turiyam form as described in the seventh mantra which is given in this slide. It is not conscious of the internal or the external world. It is not conscious of anything, not, nothing. There are no sense organs operating. There is no mind operating. Because these two are absent, you cannot see any world. This unseen entity is called as the reality. It is the only real substance. It is the only real entity in the entire universe. In the last mantra of this whole Mandukya Upanishad Karika, Gaudapada Acharya, in the fourth chapter, hundredth verse, the last verse, he bows down to this Turiyam. For him, Turiyam is God. Turiyam, as explained here, the seventh mantra, you just see the four lines, three lines here, and try to understand this is the God described by Mandukya Upanishad Karika writer, who is none other than the great grand guru of Shankaracharya. And Shankaracharya has written a brilliant commentary on this Mandukya Upanishad. I mean, these are all in Sanskrit. If you have to read and understand, if see the problem is that the Upanishad gives us the truth. But how do we interpret it? How do we understand it? How do we take that truth and take it and as my truth? That is where the gap lies. Theory is there. I have known the Mandukya Upanishad, the seventh mantra. I know the words. I have seen the meanings. But there is a gap of Anubhava. I have to know that I am the truth. I have to learn how to drop the identification with this body. I am is the truth. I am waker is not the truth. It is partial truth. It is a mixed, mixed up truth. Vekar is a upadhi. It is a reflection of the consciousness. I am dreamer is the partial truth. It is hidden. The truth is hidden. That awareness is hidden whenever I say I am a dreamer. And similarly, I am a sleeper. So waker, dreamer, sleeper are the upadhi. They are the medium through which I am trying to see myself. You remove the medium and note who you are. That is what the Upanishad is revealing. Stand naked without the body, without the mind, without anything in you. No designations of the father, mother, brother, sister. No designations. Remove all the designations. Apply the seventh mantra which is given here to that entity, reality, and you will accept that this seventh mantra is the truth of the universe. It's not only the truth about my own self, it is the truth of the entire universe. Because all seekers are also the same Atma. I am Atma Brahma. That is the revelation of this Upanishad. It's a Mahavakyam. This Atma in this body is the Atma of the entire universe. It is the inner content of the universe. Without this pure consciousness, awareness, there is no universe. 
I can say it boldly because I have the backing of the seventh mantra behind me. Without the Veda, we can never declare such statements. Without the Veda, we can never say, I am the consciousness awareness principle. It is the Vedic mantra which reveals the truth. Among all the 12 Upanishads, there is every, in every Upanishad, you will find a set of mantras which reveal the same truth as de described in this seventh verse. I had taken in the previous classes, the other, other Upanishads, where they also reveal the same. For those who are sincere seekers, you should take an exercise, take out all the 12 Upanishads, write down the, uh, write down or uh, put it, group them, group all the Upanishadic mantras which describe Atma and keep it with you like a bouquet for you to reflect on every time you are disturbed, you want to know. You can go through that at, at a, at a, a, on a daily basis. In the morning when you get up, you can just go through your own collection of mantras. This helps in get, uh, remembering the truth on a daily basis and also to take it deep into our conscious mind. See, the mind is got layers. Right at the top of the layer is the vrittis, which are coming and going. Vritti means thoughts. So the thoughts are belonging to the perceptions which we have through the five sense organs that is also in the form of thoughts they are right at the top of the mind and so this is one layer below that layer there is another layer called the memory these are the impressions which we have gathered not now not today but something which we have gathered maybe in the last 50, 60 years of our current life. Those are all in the form of vrittis. That is called as memory. So first is perceptions, all the sense stimuli which come through the five sense organs, then the mind, and then the memory. Then below the memory is the emotions, which is difficult to even uh, perceive. Memory can be perceived. For those who do yoga, you can see the memories coming, you know, while you're doing yoga, you'll find, you close your eyes, you'll find memory after memory. There are thousands of thoughts which keep coming, dancing in the Chidakasha. And then below that is the emotions which we feel like anger, jealousy, these are all structures, they are third level in the mind. Then there is an intellect. The intellect is determination. You determine to do something. You are a doer. That is again the, in the structuring of, in the, in the mind structure, the first layer, second layer, third layer, the intellect comes to fourth. And the fifth layer is the enjoyer, bhokta. Karta bhokta, karta first, bhokta. Bhokta refers to the anandamaya kosha, which we experience in sleep. Bhokta is also the reflections of uh, happiness, which we get from the external world. Sometimes I eat ice cream, I'm a bhokta. So this is how the mind, the totality of the mind works. So the perceptions and the inference drawn from the memory, emotions, thoughts, those inferences, they together form the experience of our whole life. There is nothing beyond this. You can search anything, but this is the life. Life is something which is experienced in the consciousness of the mind. 
perceptions they come in the form of vritti all these others are also in the form of vritti but they are subtle vrittis so the whole world in fact is experienced in your own mind but it appears as if it is outside because of the play of the time and space time and space are the play of the mind these are these are uh, explained in very advanced texts how this happens it is explained and um, in brahma sutra bhashyams and it's also explained in uh, in a little bit in detail in uh, in the uh, panchadesi 10th chapter which we will be doing after the mandukya upanishad i plan to take that so these are all the internal you know you once you go into your in mind how does the mind operate is a huge is a huge science by itself huge science and only the vedantic uh, uh, principles and the vedantic text they they dissect this whole mechanism called the mind into very big depths very very big depths you just have to follow the analysis of the mind and then go deeper and deeper and deeper and then understand how does how how do we experience the world in the mind but it appears as if it's outside so what i was trying to say is mithya is an appearance it is a separate category like examples of mithya are the rope snake which i experienced like the shell silver which i experienced like the mirage water which i experienced the three states are also like these experiences which i have said that is why it is called as adhyasa the three states this is what you should be careful when you listen waking dream and sleep are the three states of the mind i am the sakshi of this mind thuriyam is a sakshi principle when the world is there i am a sakshi when the world is not there i am not called sakshi i am called atma thuriyam brahma reality they are just names that is real this three states is mithya many people have done mandukya upanishad for several times i have had discussions with them they say they don't understand mandukya upanishad because they have missed this point this is the point they have missed that thuriyam is the screen is the consciousness is the substratum is the like the rope and the whole three states which we experience they come and go come and go okay but don't pay attention don't pay uh, uh, don't give over overwhelming responses to only the world try to withdraw and see that they they are all happening where they are all happening in consciousness if you understand this consciousness principle you are liberated from all the emotions you are liberated because this is the from where they are rising thuriyam is the is the ultimate truth this is from where the emotions rise this is where from where all whatever is disturbing you is all rising from this thuriyam what this second chapter is telling us is don't take all these experiences as 100% real they are appearances but there is a reality behind this which is called as consciousness be aware of that throughout your waking state you can be aware of your presence that is what we do in our meditation sessions know my presence and then operate from that core presence 
which is called as awareness, then you will be able to see your mind's operation. You'll be able to see all the, uh, the actions which are all external to that core. And they all spring from there. They all resolve there. Once you have understood this, then spirituality is nothing but it's already over. You already know the truth. I am the consciousness. You can live throughout your life as awareness principle and be abide in it and then be free. This is what I said, Dukkha Nivrti and Sukha Prapti. That means I claim, I claim this Turiyam unless I claim this as happiness. My nature is happiness, that's all. I am that Ananda Surupa Atma. That must be claimed. Dukkha Nivrti, yes, it will take place because I have dropped the identification with the mind and all the experiences. But the second part of it must be done so that the transformation is complete in Advaita philosophy. Dukkha Nivrti, Sukha Prapti and a claiming Sukham as my nature. So this Prapancha Upashamam is the text is a chapter which tells me my Turiyam nature is real and the three states which I experience is of a lower order of reality. It is called a transactional reality, Vyavaharika Satyam, which is equivalent to Mithya. Paramarthika Satyam, the absolute nature is Turiyam. Never changes independent, Vyavaharika Satyam, dependent principle. The world, the three states are dependent on me, the consciousness, on me, the experiencer. If I am not there, the world is not there. For me, for others also, for others means the people living in America, you might say the world is existing for them when I'm asleep. But then who are the people? You look at themselves, they are also consciousness people, that their true nature is consciousness. Consciousness is a substratum. They are experiencing in their world, they are in a waking state, dream state, sleep state. I am also here experiencing the dream, sleep and sleep state state. The states belong, they are, belong to the body and mind. They do not belong to the Turiya Atma. It's a very subtle point. The Mithyatvam is a very, very subtle point in Vedanta. It is, it, it generally people find it difficult. That's why I've taken a long time to explain this particular aspect because it takes time. Normally, we don't, ac we don't accept this truth because our mind is gross. Unless we purify the mind, the ego in our mind is very strong. I'm attached to my wealth. I'm attached to my family. I'm attached to all those. So I, the ego finds it difficult to drop all those and then get attached to this Atma. This is where the problem lies when we are not able to accept the truth. But that is why the Upasana will help. The Omkara Upasana helps in diluting the mind's hold on the world. When the mind, the ego's hold on the world gets dropped, then you will realize that you can meditate better. You can accept Prapancho Upashamam is the truth. Okay, so this is where we were. I finished this last week, but I wanted to repeat it again because I thought this is a difficult topic. Therefore, before I start the actual other uh, text of this chapter, it's better to go through this topic one more time so that it's clear what we are trying to do because this chapter will not make sense if you don't understand the background which I have explained just now. So, 
three pairs are negated vishwa means at the individual level virat means at the total world level i am the vishwa i the consciousness am called vishwa and i experience virat the totality of the world the consciousness which is reflected we can call it reflection but those are all terms which are being used only to make us understand of the truth but once you understand the truth all these terms all they go away and then you will realize the truth is so simple so vishwa and virat is one pair without you see there are three layers of experiences when i am the waker i experience the waking world when i am the dreamer taijasa i experience the dream world which is called as hiranyagarbha when i, I am a pragnya which means i am a sleeper i experience the sleep world which is the antar it ishvara is also in this chapter called as antaryami very beautiful word in sanskrit antaryami means the inner content of the whole universe that inner content is ishvara i like this word antaryami because it it describes the nature of ishvara and what is turiyam it is beyond these three pairs it is it is in and it is also beyond that is how we have to understand the pure consciousness without pure consciousness these three pairs cannot exist and pure consciousness can exist by itself which is what i experience in my sleep state beyond the sleep state i exist so if i want to know what will i be when i drop this body or before i birth into this body what was i remember it is the same what i am experiencing in my sleep state because in the sleep state i merge i means the indweller in this body the reflected consciousness in this body it merges with ishvara the total consciousness principle they merge in the sleep state in the sixth mantra we have seen that explanation so now we go into the proper i'll take a few minutes to just go through some of these uh, verses so the to first topic in this second chapter is from verse 1 to 3 and it takes swapna prapancha as vaitarkya that means it takes dream example and shows that the dream is false vaitarkya why is it false because it is experiential but it is not the truth why it is not the truth because the dream goes away in waking therefore unreality of the dream world is explained in verse 1 to 3 this is quite easy to understand so unreal dream world appears as though real at the time of experience of the dream you must underline this word very very important in very advanced texts like vichara sagara this particular point is taken up how do we say waking waking state is also unreal because of this one particular point that at the time of experience it appears real waking state at the time of waking appears real so the dream state at the time of uh, when you ask a dreamer from the dreamer's point of view the dream world is real from the waker's point of view the waking world is real we don't deny this fact but our mind has a capacity a faculty to go beyond the two waker i and the dreamer i and the sleeper i and look at the substratum from where all these are all coming and going that is the turiya from that point of uh, only we can say the waking world is unreal that is where you have to clearly understand how does the upanishad say 
that the waking world which I see so solid, how can it be unreal? This point must be very clearly understood. Look at it beyond the waking world. When you look at the dream world beyond the dream world from the waker's angle, you say it is unreal. But from the dreamer's angle, it is real. Same thing. From the waker's angle, the waking world is real. From the Turiyam angle, you look from Turiyam as pure consciousness, you will have this faculty. I'm not, I'm, all of us have the faculty to drop the three states and look at ourselves as the Turiyam because that is our nature. Nobody can deny. So from that pure consciousness state, I am, I can say that the waking is an appearance. Dream world has a capacity to have an appearance as though real. Three pramanams are generally used. Three pramanams means three proofs. How do I prove that the dream world is unreal? How do I prove the waking world is unreal? It is an appearance. How do I prove the sleep world is also unreal? We generally in Advaita, we use three methods. One is Shruti. Shruti means we take the verses of the scriptures. There are many verses in the scriptures which tells me the sleep state. I am the real truth. I am the Turiyam I. So I can use the scriptural text of Prashno Upanishad, Chandogya Upanishad, Mandukya Upanishad and say I am the truth in my sleep state. It's a proof from the Shruti. Dakshinamurti Stotram is also a proof. Vishwam Darpana Dishyamana Nagari. It's a proof to say that the waking is unreal. In Brahadhanek Upanishad, chapter 4 is devoted to Swayam Jyoti Brahmana. For those of you who are interested to learn more about the Turiyam nature and how to, how, to, uh, how to note that the waking world is unreal, please study the fourth chapter, the third section, Swayam Jyoti Brahmana of Brahadhanaka Upanishad. There are some notes available in my uh, Vedanta website. Uh, uh, Vedanta students website. It is there. You can go through them. I have taken some classes on this, but unfortunately I didn't record it on Zoom. Therefore, there are no, no videos available, but notes are available of the class notes are available. Even the Panchadasi, which we'll be doing after this is exactly the same thing. How Atma, by being as abiding in Atma, how can I take the world as unreal. So the dream world is mental projection, but it is really not there. The waking world is not a mental projection, but it is the projection of Maya Shakti. There is Ishwara. He has the power to project the world. It is in his mind which is called as Hiranyagarbha. The whole universe is rising. The whole universe is setting. I am, my mind is only a part of that Hiranyagarbha. But when I claim myself to be the Turiyam, then I can say this entire world is also in this mind because this mind merges with the totality of the minds of the entire universe, which is Hiranyagarbha principle which we say, which we look at the Surya and say the Surya is a representation of the total mind, which is there in the universe, the Hiranyagarbha principle. That's why the Gayatri mantra is very famous. I look at the Surya Bhagavan and say, oh Lord, who is there in the sun, Bless me in my intellect. Give me that power which you have. You are the totality, total mind principle. This is the Gayatri Mantra. Om Tatsavitiruvarenyam bargo deva sadhi maidiyona prachodhyat. The meaning of that is 
oh lord son give me that power in my intellect so that i can also understand that the whole universe is existing it is originating and it is resolving from you and you are there in my mind when you are there in me i can also experience the same so the gayatri mantra is so famous and so we all repeat it that is the meaning that is the meaning to understand my real nature i want to really understand who am i surya bhagwan bless me gayatri devi best bless me dakshinamurti first sotram also we have done this some videos are should be available in the this thing but i'm just trying to say shruti is an proof that is the ultimate proof to say that the world is unreal i am thuriyam that thuriyam is satyam whereas jagat is mithya brahma satyam jagan mithya jeevo brahma eva napara brahmananda villi also talks about the same thing from taitri upanishad all i mean there are many many shruti vakyams then the second thing is yukti yukti means reason so vedanta says you take the shruti vakyam apply it in your own mind and see whether it fits in dream objects don't have space and time to exist suddenly in the dream you find the whole universe rising the dream exists for just 90 seconds how come there is how come we experience so much there is no adequate time no adequate suddenly you find i have got married i've got children i've got grandchildren so many things happen because there is no adequate adequate time and place we say the dream world is unreal in the higher texts they say that even the waking world the time and space comes automatically projected to us the moment we get up again it gets resolved again it becomes one so this projection of the time space in this waking world is also like the projection of time space in the dream but this will require some explanation that is in the advanced text so what i am trying to say is yukti is reason anubhava is our experience our experience is what dream world doesn't exist in waking waking world doesn't exist in dream and both of them i have an experience of sleep in which i don't experience any of them so through the three pramanams proofs the sources for knowledge which is shruti yukti and anubhava i can say that the dream world and the waking world is unreal non tangible thoughts are mistaken as tangible objects in dream abstract thoughts are mistaken as concrete objects in dream so similarly a very similar uh phenomena is happening in the waking world so this mantra which is vishwam darshan it's here it says that you see the entire world in the mirror of the mind that is what is explained in this first and through the play of maya okay we will continue from the next slide that is topic number 2 next week uh and uh, we'll then we'll see how in this chapter uh how does the commentator explain the unreality of the waking world it's a very big topic uh it's a very very significant topic but it's very easy when you look at it from thuriya all this thing will click the moment you have the experience of thuriyam in your own minds as the pure i am i am is also a reflection 
I is the ultimate. I am is a reflection, is a reflected consciousness, but conscious, that is Chidabhasa. Chit is I. Chit, you can never do anything. You can never even say anything about it. It is, it just exists. And the moment you reach I am, from I am to I is a split second, it just happens. That is Ishwara's blessing. When it happens, it happens. Oh, or Namada, or Namidam, or Nahat, or Namudachade, or Nasya. Or Namata ye, or Nameva Vasishade. Oh, Shanti, Shanti, Hari Om Sri Guru Pyo Namaha. So let me see if there are any questions in the chat box. There's no questions in the chat box. So what I will do is uh, Shanmugam is going to unmute everybody. You are free to ask questions if you have any. So you can un unmute yourself. And uh, if you have any questions on today's session, or anything in particular, you can ask. Sugar. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe that awareness can be equated to Turiyam. Yeah, awareness is Turiyam. Is Turiyam itself, right? Yes. Awareness is the same as Sat, Chit, Ananda. It is the same as Turiyam. It is same as Bhuma. These are all different, different names, but they all mean the same Thuriyam. That means the unobject, there is no object in it. It is my own nature, which is called as objectless awareness. And that is where there is no time. There is no time, there is no place, there is only myself. That is what is called as Thuriyam. And all of us have the experience of Turiyam in our lives. It is not that it's something, uh, something new to us. I'm only trying to uncover that nature of mine. And I'm trying to see all my experience with reference to that. That is the objective. That means whenever the waking state comes, you straight away tell yourself it is an appearance it will go away after 24 hours. Again, another day will come, another day will go. But I, the Thuriyam consciousness, continuously am there. Exactly like I don't experience anything in my sleep state. In that state, who am I? I am this Thuriyam. So keep that as the constant. Keep that as the core of your personality. Today, I have got the body as the personality, the mind as my personality. Mm -hmm. If somebody asks me, I say, I'm very agitated, I'm very uh, disturbed. So shift your attention from that mind and the body to this pure consciousness. Deliberately, you do it in meditation so that it becomes your nature after some time. It is not easy to do it immediately for many of us. 99% of the people will not be able to do it, but with practice, it can be done. With more listening to the scriptures, the mind gets purified. Purified means what? You try to accept whatever the Upanishads say mm -hmm. as the truth. Mm -hmm. If the Upanishad says that you are Turiyam Brahma, 
but my mind keeps on saying no 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 i am how can i be you know i am such a small body in this universe how can i be so that is the projection of the mind it is not the truth the truth is lying behind the mind without any mind's projection that is what is the is what the upanishad is declaring but you are bringing it bringing in uh, bringing your own thoughts that is an obstacle that should drop it automatically drops after some time when you are continuously listening to these talks it will happen and it will your own mind will tell you i am now turiya atma there is no doubt at all for me many people have come back from these sessions and have come back and told me yes the upanishads declare the truth i can accept it now because i have clarity in my thought see the clarity in thought is very important which is called as viveka shakti viveka between real and unreal in kathopanishad also nachiketa asked the same question to lord of lord yama and he said tell me what is this real and what is unreal is there anything beyond what i think is real for him reality was the world and reality for him nachiketa was the atma he said that there is nothing called as atma so then the lord yama had to explain to him what is real and unreal what is time and beyond time and in this umandok upanishad the first mantra clearly tells us you are timeless the definition of turiyam is there in the first mantra umandok upanishad says the timeless principle is your real nature and when do you experience this timelessness in sleep and in waking you try to understand what is that nature of mind which the upanishad says is my real nature and the seventh mantra you try to apply everything to your existence consciousness shantam shivam advaitam everything you apply to that sleep state you will say yep, everything is true only thing is i am ignorant ignorant about that in the sleep state but when i try to think about that in the waking state it becomes real it is no longer unreal it is no longer non existence it becomes existence for me okay uh chandra that's a good question anybody else i just want i have a question yeah yeah deepa uh, the uh, consciousness uh, in the waking state is the manifested uh, is manifested correct or the consciousness is manifested in the way uh, as a waker in the waking world correct it's unmanifested as a sleeper and uh, as ishvara correct at it is this unmanifested that is the turiyam yes that's correct it rests it rests in turiyam yes the substratum the, is the it is subs- also called as unmanifest the sleep state is also called as unmanifest yes that means that and you un, you're 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 working with two unmanifest states dreamer state is what the dreamer state is a manifest state because manifest it's a, it's manifesting a world in the dream manifesting the so it's a so manifest waking world and the dream world together is called as manifest manifest state and and you had mentioned that uh, in the uh, and i've understood this that the this uh, objects uh, mind body and this world appears in consciousness you had mentioned you said somewhere it appears in the mirror of consciousness can we also uh, in in articulating this can we also say that this uh, world appears in the mirror of the mind as reflected consciousness in the awareness in awareness of the i mean yes. can we say keep, yes yes you know, yes you are right you are right what you have said we, now is the absolute truth because the mind is the mirror mind is the mirror reflection yes. is first in the i am you know i am is yeah. the mind is the consciousness yeah. is reflected yes so if i were to sort of do a diagram i would say i would say this world the mirror and the consciousness is the bulb that illuminates that exactly that, it is the that, light that, which is illuminating that illuminating yes. that's it yeah so the, that is clear now yes. very clear 
and this is exactly if you remember what exactly you have told now the same thing is there explained in the chapter 15 of the bhagavad gita in three words of shara purusha akshara purusha uttama purusha in the 15th chapter of the bhagavad gita yes. lord krishna is explaining exactly what you said just now yes uttama purusha is the pure consciousness yes shara purusha is the jiva with the mind you know it is yes. it is perishable perishable akshara purusha is that unmanifest condition of the sleep state unmanifest condition sleep state right so the 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 waker dissolves in as a dreamer which dissolves in the deep sleep which dissolves which rest in turiyam exactly now we have understood uh, mandukya all your questions i yeah, think exactly. now uh, deepak you you told me you didn't understand mandukya a long time ago yes this is the second time or third time i'm doing it actually but fantastic your pick up is really good this time you have Thank you you have got absolutely that the truth right to the core of uh, what is the truth very good okay anybody else has a question sir vanakkam ramesh here sir yeah ramesh yeah uh, so i had this question when you were on the subject of this uh, satyam and mithya yes you had mentioned that the body belongs to the universe the mind body and the mind belongs to the universe yeah. world is an appearance and you had also mentioned that the whole universe is rising and falling and the mind is a part of it Correct. now and you mentioned that was this in the hiranya garba principle i yes. always thought that uh, uh, then if if this is in the hiranya garba principle then in the turiyam state it should be that the rather than the body and mind being a part of the universe the universe should be a part of us no the universe uh, uh, no, comes no, no, in no the universe is not a part you see uh, you should not confusion confuse between part and the whole yeah see the body and mind is a part you should be very clear body is a very infinitesimal small portion of the total five elements which exist in the whole universe okay the air which is which we are breathing in my lungs what is there the air principle in my lungs is infinitesimal point uh, of the whole air principle in the vayu tatvam in the whole universe okay so i am a part of the universe so that that means first you have to drop your body and mind into the universe mm -hmm. and then you see that then you try to understand who am i that i without the body and mind is turiyam and then you say that the world is mithya i am satyam world is an appearance i am the satyam i am the consciousness now you hold on to consciousness don't hold on to your body and mind come out of your body mind identification mm -hmm. come to the consciousness as your core now right. take that as your core and then mm -hmm. see the world in the world there is a body which is your body in the world there is a mind which is a small tiny mind of yours so you yes. are no longer identified with your uh, body and mind which is limited definitely limited but you are the consciousness which is unlimited it is limitless it is and timeless the, and in that consciousness the universe rises and uh, yes. dissolves now you, with the reference to consciousness only you can see <laughs> the universe is rising universe is falling it is existing only with reference to the consciousness not with reference to the body or body small the mind yeah i got it now sir you're clear right i got it clear yeah. we are the we, yeah. we are the naam and rupa yeah naam and rupa is the jiva yes yeah. naam and rupa is the jiva jiva bhati uh, priyam you know uh, the three aspects of asti bhati priyam is satchit ananda so moment the form dissolves moment the 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 form dissolves the gold remains so that's yes. what is the that, that gold is the consciousness gold is the consciousness and gold is the same which is appearing as the chain and the bank as, as jiva and the the soul paramatma world. yes the gold is the consciousness which is have uh, which is like the bangle ring and chain the same consciousness is the gold compared to the gold it is appearing that is why we call it as an appearance yeah 
and that is why it is called as advaitam gold is advaitam the chain so resolves in gold yeah. the waking resolves in consciousness that is why it is called as advaitam ultimately the truth is advaitam only because everything resolves into this consciousness and individually the the the, the necklace the chain they have no entity uh, apart Absolutely. from the gold you are right ramesh in between the uh, yes in between for some period of time they had an existence of their own we thought that necklace is that the necklace is me and yeah. i am the, i am the, the center of the whole world we thought but that body and mind is only a name form now i have understood there is a consciousness behind this which is the center of the universe which the upanishad is now teaching me i can be i can remain with this knowledge i don't need to tell this to my husband wife uh, children nothing this teaching is only for me i can remain and then you see what happens to your sorrows your sorrows become negligible all the problems you will find you will find which is appearing in the world you can solve it very easily it will come and go it will come and go that's it got it sir okay very good thank good you. question i'm glad you raised it and you got your answer thank you sir thank you anybody else and any other question uh second day yeah babu uh i got a question ja yeah, tell me uh the saturday class that day uh, you were saying that uh, in the gita it says no one is free from the three guna right correct so uh, let's say the high souls are uh, they are above that right correct you see the uh, the the so, the realized people they don't identify with the gunas which is the mind hmm but mind why is, do they put that the gunas remember always mind uh, means the guna oh the moment you are the mind uh, then you are the same oh. as turiyam which is declared here oh you see in the, the sentence uh, in the chapter 14 of the gita the the yeah. analysis there taken is the gunas and the guna atita gunas there mm -hmm. means the three gunas sattva rajas and tamas uh -huh. so atma with reference to the gunas was that analysis done there oh. and there also we said that the mind is the one which has got the three gunas which is prakriti in the uh -huh. mind the three gunas are operating mm -hmm. here what we are doing is the same analysis we are doing in the mind the three states are coming sattva state is the waking state raja state is the uh, dream state the tamas state is the sleep state mm -hmm. all of them are coming and going all belong to the mind and the mind gets the power from consciousness to reveal the three states and then to resolve the three states i am mm -hmm. that power behind the mind i am the shetragnya i am the guna atita atma of the 14th chapter of the bhagavad gita in this upanishad it is called as turiya oh. so that uh, is what krishna uh, yeah that is yeah. how you have to link the bhagavad gita and the upanishad you have to link they are all talking of exactly the same mm -hmm. because the uh, lord krishna told uh, arjuna that uh, even a high soul can fall if he is not careful so the three gunas are still alive in the mind yes is it correct right? for even yeah. for the high souls that means even for a realized martyr master the yeah. three gunas will be there as long as he has a body uh as long as because the body and mind are related the three gunas oh. are related to the body as long uh -huh. as you are seeing the body of the mahatma you will uh -huh. see the play of the three gunas in the body of the mahatma oh okay because you are the seer it is it is part of the anamaya kosha that's correct yeah. oh so if you look at the three koshas you will see that there is a gross body yeah. subtle body yeah. and the uh, causal 
Yes. So the gunas are part of the stula body exactly. and the uh, the first. Mm. Yes. Uh, and the anamaya kusha. That's right. So when um, you are looking at the mahatma, you are looking at the mahatma uh, from his body and mind. You are not looking at him as what he is thinking, what he is. Uh, because they yeah. undergo the the same suffering we go also, right? Yes, you see the body. You see, again, huh? you are saying uh, suffering. Suppose they have a body pain, they will also hmm. have the same back pain like you and me. Uh huh. If yeah. If they have a, a heart thing. problem, they also have a heart problem like you and me. Yeah, there's a thing. But uh, shake. Yeah, there is a difference between their mind and my mind. You see, I will hmm. when when I I am suffering a, a back problem. Every day, the mm. whole day, I'll be thinking as, uh, and I'll be repeating, I'm suffering, I'm suffering, I'm suffering. Mm. Yeah, yeah, correct. You know, but they will, mm. they will not repeat this in their mind. Oh, I see. What they will say is, my body has got a problem. It will face the pain mm. and it, the pain will vanish one day. I just have not the mind, I am not the body, I am the ever free art. This is the exactly the words mm. which I am telling you will be the words in mm. which they will be uttering when they are having mm. any suffering. Oh, yeah. Because these words will also be come to you when you also know the truth. Mm. Suppose you have heard the Bhagavad Gita, you have heard the Upanishad, mm. and you have mm -hmm. absorbed the meaning of these words. You have yeah. up to your heart and say, mm. I am not the body. I am not my mind. I am the pure mm -hmm. Atma. You touch your mm -hmm. heart and say, mm -hmm. I am the Atma. You will forget the pain in the body. You will forget oh. the sorrows in life. And oh. you will be free from sorrow. Oh. Everybody I, can uh, do it. Everybody yeah. can say and do this. Mm -hmm. All of us can do it. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's why right, the, the sentence... Uh, no one is free from so and so like yeah. they put up. Uh, yeah. So I was worried about this, you know. Uh, okay. Now you are clear, right? Soul, yeah. Now so, you are clear, right? Me, we are just the observer like that. Yes. You know? That's right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Deepak, you are saying? You know, I, uh, I think Lakshmi has a question, so I'll come after her. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lakshmi. Yeah, no, no, you can. Uh, sir, uh, just one small question actually, sir. Sir, uh, uh, like uh, in the Durya state, no, when we all sleep, we wake up and everyone has the same expression like uh, uh, we slept uh, very well and we, uh, we don't know what happened. But actually, sir, when I wake up, I will be waking up with my own uh, previous uh, whatever is left behind. No, like uh, whatever work I had to do uh, um, early morning, what I should do. I'll, I'll remember that. You yeah. will remember your own things. No, so these right. are, uh, where is all these things are stored actually? Yeah. See, if Turiya is having one, only one Turiya is there for everyone. No, sir? Yes. So, like uh, that state of... Uh, uh, like an uh, unmanifested state is the one single one for all the jiva. But when I wake up, even though I say uh, say that I I didn't uh, remember anything, but yes. I will uh, immediately I will come up to my own works, no sir. So yeah. is, where, he, is it in the causal yeah. body or something? Yeah, yeah. You see, two, two, just two, two weeks two weeks before, I had mentioned uh -huh. three three words in my talk. One is called as uh -huh. Bhuta Akasha. The second uh -huh. is called as Chitta Akasha, and the last one is Chida Akasha. Okay, there are three spaces which we must know. Bhuta Akasha is where we all live in the gross with the gross body. This is called Bhuta okay, Akasha. You see, what wherever we are listening from is called as Bhuta Akasha. That means it is the gross space. The space which is uh, which is the gross element called as which is uh, gross element called as the space in which the body the gross body and the gross objects are accommodated okay so the second is called as chitta akasha chitta means memory our like, uh, our consciousness has got a reflected consciousness that reflected consciousness is called as the chidabhas. 
in the chidabasa in the reflected consciousness the space called as chidakasha the memories are there okay okay uh. it is not in the external gross space uh uh understood sir and chidakasha is the reflected consciousness in each body okay uh. so you have a body you have a reflected consciousness in your body in your reflected consciousness your memory is stored okay sir understood and then there is the third one which is called as chit atman that is chit that, that that is ultimate chaitanyam it exists in its own glory it is no it is not even called as space it is the glory of chit it is the glory of chaitanyam there is no space in it there is no time in it. so that is what is my ultimate truth the the memories which come to me they are all part of the chidabasa mm -hmm. in the chidabasa in the reflected consciousness i can see my memories i can see my thoughts so when you said i get up in the morning i start remembering what mm -hmm. i want so that i which was the ego i which was living which is the indweller jiva mm -hmm. which is temporarily living in this body has got things to do it has got karmas to perform it has got sanchita karmas it has got prarabdha karmas it has got agami karmas these karmas are stored in the causal body causal body is the karana sharira that is the punya papam so the punya papam are stored in the karana shariram the memories are all stored in the in the uh, in the yes. chidakasha the reflected consciousness okay. Okay. that is why you are able to be aware of them the light which is illumining the memory is the consciousness the light of consciousness so your so memory is different see you have your body has you, you see your body uh, is basically the i which is there in this body the mind your mind has got a i That okay. I is attached to your body. It is not attached to my body. Ah, oh, understood. Huh? So whatever. So that will be recorded in this uh, chidaga. Chidaga. Yes, it is recorded in memory. It is recorded oh. in the mind, and that is in the chidabasa. Okay. So even in the deep sleep state, this is uh, uh, still there. Yes, it is there. It's it not, is not uh, unmanifest uh, condition. Un unmanifest okay. state. Okay, sir. So memory is in unmanifest condition in the sleep state. Oh. Okay, sir. The memory also becomes this... awake; it becomes active. Uh -huh. Now, the same memory is the thing which uh -huh. which you take away to the next body. Also, what happens is many many things the memory will forget. Uh -huh. Like even today, do you remember uh -huh. all your experiences which you had from your birth till today? No. No, sir. No. You remember only certain, maybe two percent, three percent. Okay. Uh, you know, may, uh, um, uh, some people maybe eight percent, ten percent. Okay. Uh, Out of this eight percent, ten percent, also when you take the next body, uh, these memories will be gone. Only a tendency will remain. Vastas. Okay. Uh, 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 Out of okay. this memory, a tendency is formed. A okay. tendency to know. A okay. tendency to know the Vedas. Uh, uh, That tendency will continue in the next birth. Okay, understood. <coughs> and then you will see, for example, out of all the people in India, how come you are listening to Veda, you are listening to Mandukya Upanishad? Because why? Why is Deepak coming and listening? Why is Ramesh coming and listening? Why is Lakshmi coming and listening? Why? Why are only certain minds are listening? It's because of the vasana. Okay. So, There is a so, vasana which is associated with the jiva. Okay, sir. Understood. So the uh shekha ji i was you know uh, very uh, last time if i had asked you about the vasna and the bmi concept and now it's very clear to me that the vasnas are a part of the causal body yes uh, okay. it is this it is from the maya to vasna that we come to the three instruments of body mind intellect exactly that is why <laughs> vasnas are at the top at the top and yes. the chitta is part of the anta karna which is part of the which is a part of the mind mind which is part of the stool body correct so i think constantly we have to look at these three parts to yes. see and yes. the subtle uh, mind or subtle whatever you call is part of the subtle body yes 
Is it? Yeah, I would imagine. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, what what goes out? Yes. Uh, so there is an individual mind as the cosmic mind. The moment we get up from two, there are two minds which are playing because yeah. the cosmic mind is an inference. Inference, yes, yes. <laughs> Even my own mind is an inference for me because I can't see the mind by my physical eyes. You see, there is some emotions in me. I don't know what it is. It is an inference that there is a mind in my body is an inference. It is not pratyaksham. It is not uh, something which I uh, which which I can know from my five sense organs. Mind is a subtle body, which is experienced by all. At the same time, we say that the mind is just a fleeting mind. It exists for some time; it again vanishes. This is the nature which is called as mind. <coughs> The moment you understand, mind is a fleeting mind. You see, so many experiences have come and gone. Yes, today morning experiences are not no longer with me right now. It's all fleeting. These are all experiences, experiences coming, going, coming, going. It's a flux. So, Deepak, you're right. You've got your understanding clear. Sir, sir, so for a realized person. Uh, sir, for a realized person, can we say that uh, this Chidagasha is equal to Chittagasha, something like that? Yes, yes. No. Right. Oh, yes. Yes. For him, uh, the Chidagasha uh, has already uh, merged with the Chidagasha. Uh, Chittagasha, okay. Yes, uh, it has already merged. So, understood. You know, the, see, for example, when Mahatmas uh, look at the world, that, uh, uh, they, they will, you know, suppose you Vasana, go to Mahatma Siddha. and complain uh, uh, about your problems. You see, uh, they will say that this mind is in problem, that's all. Uh, Mm -hmm. Understood, sir. You see, they will not say that the person is a problem. Mm -hmm. They will look at you uh, as consciousness uh. only because you are consciousness, they are consciousness, you and I are the same. They know it. Uh, but uh. you don't know understood. that. Okay, understood, sir. Okay. <laughs> very good. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Question. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Very, very deep question. Good. Just uh, I have one question that the. Uh, the uh, the the uh, tattvas of the samkhya are the same ones that are used for the advaita vedanta 25 tattvas are the similar to the samkhya philosophy philosophy okay yeah is is that right because in in the in the samkhya they put mahat yes 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 yeah in the yeah. in the bhagavad gita the, the what lord yeah. krishna has taken is the structure of the world or the universe which the Sankhya people have given as yes. 24 tattvams, yes. Lord Krishna and Advaitam, they broadly they accept it. So we also accept it. We accept it. But we also. the conclusions we don't accept. We don't accept. We don't accept because Sankhya is a Dvaita philosophy. Yeah. They, they say that there are many Atmas. Yes, yes. And they say Atma is, then they say Atma is Jadam. You see, they have a very confusing Nayayikas, they say Atma is Jadam. They have very confusing theories, so don't get into... No, no I'm not Sankhya. getting... No, no, I'm just telling you that yeah, uh, in uh, in the Sankhya Matam, they are all Dvaitins by nature. They all, only one thing they all accept is that there is Adhyasa. There is a superimposition, <laughs> which everybody accepts. In Brahma Sutra Bhashyam, uh, that uh, Shankaracharya clearly says that all the Matthams, they accept Adhyasa, the superimposition, but the conclusion of the why that Adhyasa happens, each one of them, they differ. That is why in the in uh, Adhyasa Bhashyam, Shankaracharya in the Brahma Sutra, beginning talk of the Shankaracharya, before he starts the Brahma Sutra is, he will go through the Adhyasa. What is the error which, Adhya, uh, which Advaitin thinks is the error? What is the cause of that error? And uh, how does that express itself? How it can be corrected? He talks that first and then he gives the entire Bhashyam and says, now apply this principle of error, understand that error principle clearly, uh, then you will understand Vedanta. I will take up that process, uh, that, uh, you know, the Adhyasa Bhashyam 
sometime hopefully i will take it up for this group also sir please take it as actually yeah. I, i was waiting for that it's only an introduction <laughs> no sir it's an introduction it's of it's an introduction uh, of brahma sutra bhashya uh, 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 uh there are it's a, it's, a, it's a very very advanced uh, vedanta there and it is the foundation of vedanta shankara acharya's foundation of why he says advaitam and the why he says mm-hmm. the world is unreal i am the truth i am the consciousness he says i the truth the puriyam the mm-hmm. pure consciousness mm-hmm. is the substratum is mm-hmm. like the rope without mm-hmm. the rope there is no rope snake Uh-huh. without the consciousness there is no waker dreamer sleeper uh-huh. this is called as adhyasa uh-huh. the waker dreamer sleeper are appearing in consciousness that appearance is co- due to superimposition that is the superimposition and that is the mistake what all of us are making and adhyasa bhashyam will teach us how to remove this sambandha with the okay. with the uh, superimposition okay. in adhyasa bhashya how that adhyasa yeah. happened to jiva how the adhyasa now. happens he clearly defines uh-huh. it he takes it up uh, like i said you know there are 14 lectures on this which uh-huh. have to be digested it has to be uh, it is not easy because it's entirely in sanskrit and uh, oh. but you can find uh, some things in the uh, in the internet you will find in the adhyasa bhashyam lectures are available by mahatmas you can go through them if you are very particular oh. to go through it now you can go oh. through it they, they are all available in the youtube you can see it uh, uh, shekha ji uh, brahma sutras are separate and the shankara bhashyam is separate but shankara bhashyam is part of brahma sutra or shankara bhashyam refutes what is written in uh, brahma sutra no, no, i'm really no, confused no no no, 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 no. okay yeah. let me uh, let me tell you this see veda vyasa is the author of brahma sutra now veda vyasa what he did was he is the compiler of all the upanishads before him the vedas were there in the leaves form in the leaves they were all written and they were all jumbled up so the chandogya upanishad uh, uh, jumbled up with the taitri upanishad taitri upanishad jumbled up with the uh, all the vedas the, all the yajur veda rig veda they were all in jumbled condition now he is the one who categorized the vedas into four vedas four vedas means what even the upanishad is a part of the veda only so he is the one veda vyasa categorized the veda into four ved, uh, the four vedas the four vedas have got upanishads as the end portion in some, in the upanishad in uh, so yajur veda has got many upanishads uh, uh, rig veda has got many upanishads uh, atharvana veda has got many upanishads so each of the upanishads they have a end portion which is called as veda anta Mm-hmm. essence of veda yeah. essence That's of Upanish- veda that is which is upanishad Upanish- truth in in the veda in the yajur veda there is a truth declared in the rig veda there is a truth declared in the atharvana veda there is a truth declared so the truth declared is in the end portion called the vedanta and vedanta mm-hmm. is in each of the rig veda there are upanishads so that is why we take 12 upanishads for study some from yajur veda some from rig veda some from atharvana veda and try to see what they are all telling me about me now when uh, veda vyasa finished compilation of all the vedas then what he thought was that there are certain mantras in the upanishads which are contradicting each other in some of the mantras in the upanishads seemingly they contradict dwa suparna is a mantra that means jiva in the munda upanishad it says jiva atma and paramatma are two birds sitting in a tree in the tree now there is confusion is jiva atma uh, same as paramatma or paramatma is higher than jiva atma there is a confusion so these contradictory mantras of the upanishads 
in the brahma sutra veda vyasa clarifies it brahma sutra is sutras in uh, you know small cryptic statements there are al almost like 555 sutras aphorisms aphorism yeah so these sutras are only trying to remove the and give us clarity of the upanishadic mantra shankaracharya has written a commentary on these 555 sutras given by veda vyasa in that commentary in the beginning before shankaracharya explains these sutras his commentary on the sutras sutras are meant for uh, 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 removing the clarifications removing the doubts regarding the upanishadic mantra shankaracharya has written a commentary on that in that commentary he has written a bhashya a commentary called as adhyasa bhashya the beginning of that brahma sutra before shankaracharya started writing a commentary on the vedas on the brahma sutra sutras he said first of all let me clarify to you what is the problem of the human mind and he says in that bhashyam uh, i uh, you know if you if you, you can buy any brahma sutra you can see it in the web also this will be there right at the beginning it is called as adhyasa bhashya sir it will run in uh, run it to say 25 30 pages in sanskrit and so on you can I, or maybe 10 12 pages you see that now in that bhashyam the beginning portion shankaracharya says that there is a error which is there in all the human mind there is an error now this error is they can call it like a manufacturer's defect in the human body this is what chinmayananda says adhyasa is basically a manufacturing uh, defect <laughs> god has made human beings but this is a manufacturing defect but now we have to remove that manufacturing defect by the study of the veda so there in that bhashyam shankaracharya's analysis of the human mind is phenomenal is really phenomenal how does the human mind think about this and that how does the human mind think this is mine i am this how does the human mind think the psychology behind this is explained very beautifully in that and there is a lot of analysis of how uh, the other philosophers they look at this same error how they look at it they look at it in a different way than shankaracharya like rope snake example they take in that adhyasa bhashyam they say rope there is a snake which is there in the snake park that is what is seen in the rope there is some school of thought like that you know so i'm just telling you that this is the analysis of how the human mind uh, sees the waker as i the dreamer as i the sleeper as i and that is the error which we have to remove and once we remove that error then you will have zero problems to understand i am the conscious but we all have to reach that stage to grasp the teaching of the brahma sutra bhashya we have to wait for some time till we take the upanishad then only we'll take the brahma sutra bhashya but uh, let me see how how it uh, develops uh sometime maybe i'll take it up i'll tell you uh let's see so yes, are you clear now deepa yes sir okay good Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night. Thank you very much. Bye.